Hello and welcome to another episode of Rubber Minds Plus. My name is Desmond and I'm joined by political analyst uh, Mr. Timmy Dyer Siddiq. Hi Mr. Timmy Dyer. Hi Desmond. How are you? I'm fine. Pleasure to be on the show again. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, I feel we've, over the weeks, we've had a lot of conversations about Operation Amotekun. So, there's been a lot of anticipation for what Ashiwaju Bola Metinubu would say about Operation Amotekun and how um, the conversation about um, the federal government declaring it as an illegal security outfit. Mm -hmm. And um, now he's come out to um, address it. And then there's been a lot of conversations online about his stance on it. So in um, his statement, he says, um, those claiming that this limited inoffensive addition to security threatens the Republic have taken themselves upon a madcap excursion. Those claiming that the federal government seeks to terribly su suppress the Southwest have also lost their compass. Those who occupy these two extremes have sunken into the dark recesses of fear and political parano paranoia that can undo a nation if such sentiments are allowed to, ge to gestate. So, what are your thoughts about, um, first, his silence for this period, all through, like, it's been two weeks now, um, his silence on the topic and his speech now before we get to address, go into the conversation of his statement. Well, um, thank you. I, I read through the statement. I, I read all of it um, this morning. And um, it's obvious, it's pretty obvious that this person in question is trying to be careful, is trying to... Uh, be as diplomatic as possible. I, I see that it's largely sitting on the fence. Um, when you look at the key parts of the statement, there, there are very many areas where he commends this um, party, that's the South, <laughs> South government, and uh, on the other hand, he faults whatever they do or whatever they've done, and then he goes same, uh, the same for uh, the Attorney General of the Federation and I mean, it's ju it's just trying to be diplomatic, and obviously, there's been this speculation uh, for months now, if not years, that um, he, he has run. intention to become um, president, president in 2023 at the expiration of the current president, who he helped um, to power at the expiration of his tenure. So, um, I think he's just trying to play safe. Playing safe, but what does he communicate at the end of the day? What does he communicate to the people who? Um, yes, there's a conversation about his interest. He has not come out to officially um, say so, but then it's just hearsay. A lot of people think he would um, be contesting in 20, come 2023. 20, but then, what does his statement communicate to the people, to the person who's who just read, like you who read um, the story this morning? Are you talking about with relation to the political ambition that is being that is rumored? Yes, and or? one, and then. The society, what it generally communicates as him being a statement? Well, um, for political watchers um, like myself and for people who are in the know as to um, some information that is not out in the public domain as it relates to the way um, politicians go about um, their ambition just before it becomes public, mm -hmm. it sort of confirms that this man has an interest to um, go for the top office, in the, that's the top political um, sit in the land, but um, I would say that generally some may take it, take this um, reaction, this is response emotionally, talking about the people of the Southwest, because um, if somebody has, is seen as a leader, as mm. a political leader, they expect that it will stand out for them, that every time he speaks, he speaks for the interests of the people um, who he precise, so to speak. So um, with what um, um, Ashiba Dibola Ahmed Tinubu has done today, it goes to confirm that this is, I'm just being kept, and even said it that um, a lot of people expected, they, they criticized him for being silent, silent for, a for a period of time, and that as a political leader, he cannot rush to make uh, AST statements. Statement. And he was even saying that um, both parties were uh, handling the issue emotionally. However, he should realize, I believe that he knows except he, he wants to feign ignorance uh, i believe that he knows that the reason why people expect him to speak is that we've not been brought to this point before where this entire region the entire southwest geopolitical mm. zone 
uh, speaking with one voice, voice okay. on a particular thing, and it's expected. And don't forget that this issue, um, there's a foundation to it, which is the fact that killings, kidnappings, banditry, mm. as you as you may say, have been going on in the southwest for a while. But the last straw, as we will describe it, that broke the canvas back was when the daughter of the Afeni Ferry leader, mm. uh, Paruben Fashionanti, the daughter was killed, and that seemed like we cannot continue with this. Mm -hmm. And so, from then, it, the um, Amotekon initiative is even a brainchild, not necessarily of the governors, but of the people of the Southwest who, at the security summit that was put together by the Dawn Commission, said we need something to ensure that this region, this uh, geopolitical zone, is effectively policed. Mm -hmm. So, when you have leaders who are, I mean, people who are highly respected, keeping quiet, about the fact that somebody declared that move as unconstitutional what it goes to show is that um, they expect this person to stand for us they expect this man to speak towards our own um, um, protection protection of our own lives and property so in keeping silent no, that they expected him to speak was not out of place and now that he has spoken he has clearly shown like i will repeat again as a political watcher he has clearly shown that um, he's been careful. He has an ambition mm -hmm. to protect. He supported this government in power. And if it is what we have been seeing in, although not in public domain, but what we've heard that there's some of an arrangement, sort of an arrangement between the president and himself, that when he's leaving power, he hands over to him. It just goes to confirm that somewhat, um, this is not, I can't be very assertive on it, but just goes to confirm that is trying to be careful just so that it does not offend um, sensibilities. Fantastic. I like um, the conversation you, we just had. Um, but then I want to round it off with um, the branding of the social, um, the security outfit, Amotekun. So on the show, Robin Mines with Ibuka, um, one of the guests on the show complained about the branding and what it communicates to the government. So do you think it's a, the security outfit, the problem is um, the branding or what are your thoughts about it? So for me, um, I personally don't have an issue with the branding. Amotekun in Yoruba language simply means leopard. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a way of instilling fear in those who have taken it upon themselves to bring trouble in the Perpetrate. region. Okay. Um, those who want to perpetrate um, crime and whatsoever um, vices that has been going on that the Amotekun was set up for. Mm. However, I have read, and this is a part of what Tinebu um, said in, in the statement he released that I agree with that um, most of the people who are condemning the Amotekun initiative don't really have um, a thorough, they don't, they don't have a thorough grasp of all of the provisions that is contained but if there is anything that we need to continue to emphasize whether mm. on the part of southwest governors or other um, parts of nigeria who have commended this initiative is mm -hmm. the fact that amoteku whether with the leopard or even if it's an eagle or a bird that's the logo is only to complement the um, efforts of the police yeah, yeah, just to right. help the police gather intelligence for example you know that we already have a shortage of police personnel in this country mm -hmm. and many of these kidnappings and crimes that go on um, take place in the forests so but bringing on task bringing um, members of opc and all of these local um, initiatives to um, gather intelligence and then hand over to the police just goes to show that they are localizing the solutions. I mean, you cannot try to um, treat a, a, an issue of such nature by trying to uh, make it um, and do it the way we've been doing it before. You need to make it as local as possible so that you have effective solutions. So, as far as I'm concerned, the issue of um, the leopard head or whatsoever name it's given does not be, and Amotekun is just a code name. Mm. We've had Operation Python Dance, we've had Operation uh, uh, Snake Bite or whatsoever in this country and it did not bring up any issue. Mm. Amoteko is just the code name. The real name is the Western, Western Nigeria Security, Security Network, Network. Okay. Operation Amoteko. So the Amoteko is not um, the issue. The issue is that there is bad blood between 
two sections of the country and that one feels mutual suspicion one fe especially uh, i need to understand the fact that the reason why there's so much opera about this mm. is the fact that there is a perceived notion that power should return to the south in 2023 mm. and you have a situation where a region of six states with one in the opposition talking about or your state who has a pdp governor so to speak they all agreed to an initiative and they are speaking with one voice that's political issue threaten anybody who would have thought that they could divide these people along political lines. So mm -hmm. that's where the real issue is. I don't think it has anything to do with the branding or logo. Thank you so much for sharing with us um, on this episode of Robin Minds Plus. It's been an amazing show. Um, please comment, um, share your thoughts on um, this topic um, right down below. Thank you so much. My name is Desmond and do have an amazing day.